Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch and welcome as I bring you back to Juni in New South Wales. Today, you're about to see an innovative collector in this week's Classic Restos on the road. As soon as I arrived here, I immediately realised that presentation is everything. It's the ultimate combination, a beautiful home and an awesome shed. Meet Peter Curran and his wife Pam. They have known each other since 14 years of young. Residing here on around three acres in Juni, New South Wales, enjoying this place for the past 25 years. Peter is retired, but not really. Every day he gets up and is kept busy doing something. And us car guys can appreciate that. The house sits nicely next to the shed. The shed is warmed by one of the best heating devices known to man, and that has to be three truck brake drums welded together. The shed hosts a man cave, and from there it outlooks onto a beautiful XY GT replica, an XAGT, a V8 EH Holden, BA Boss 290 Falcon, and a replica Peter Brock Austin, sporting a 186 out to a 192 six banger. The house, the shed, the property, everything here is immaculate. With me now, Peter Curran. How are you, sir? Very well, thank you, Fletch. Thank you for the invitation here. My pleasure. You've got a, a few crown jewels here, haven't you? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, beautiful. Okay. Let's start with this. What a beautiful car. We have a replica GT here because, as you know, there's more GT Falcons around now than what Ford Australia made. That's right. That's yes. correct, isn't it? That is. Um, XY Fairmont. Yep. That's the beautiful thing about these GTs. They've always had beautiful interiors based on Fairmonts. Um, give us the rundown on what you've done here, Peter. Uh, it was stripped down to a bare shell, put on a rotisserie, um, completely stripped back to bare metal and repainted, of course. And then every nut and bolt was turned away and, and cleaned and re-zinked. All the bumper bars were re-chromed and slowly put back together. A factory air car too. A factory air, yeah. Always nice to see those factory vents in the dash of an XY. Uh, very, very rare. Absolutely. Yeah. So how many years ago did you do it, Peter? Probably about 15 years, I reckon, that I've done this one up here. Yeah. yeah, and this mm. is another thing too. We don't drive them every day, kept inside, and yeah. they just preserve so well. You mm. could have told me that that paint there was off the gun two years ago, and mm. I, I wouldn't mm. know any different. No, that's right, yeah. Now, engine up front, Peter, with the 351 Cleveland, what specs did you go for there? It's virtually just got a mild cam in it, it's, uh, 650 Holly. Um, yeah, it's not over the top, there's the extractors. Yeah, it goes quite well, but yeah. Mm. That's okay. Look, you know, they're the sort of car that, look, you know, it's presentation. It could be sitting yeah. still doing you know, 40 or 50 k's an hour, just through Juni, through town, mm. and it just looks so good. Now, top loader and a 9-inch? Top loader and a 9-inch, yeah, right. Yeah, as well, yeah. Um, completely dynamated floors, firewall, door inside the doors are dynamated, mm. roof dynamated, so mm. it's a very, very quiet car to drive. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Not a rattle in it. So, history of the car, what, what can you tell us there, Peter? Um, well, a chap in town bought, bought the car and started stripping it down and realised he couldn't finish it and he said if I bought him another car with a V8 in it he'd, he would swap me. Hmm. So I bought him a Fairlane with a V8 in it and I end up with, a, with the XY. I grew up in when they first come out and couldn't afford one so 
As years went by, I ended up buying a few GTs over the years, and then then I decided I'd better collect them for a while. <laughs> that's where it ended up. And, uh, that's how I ended up with a collection of them. It's just over the years, I've always liked the cars and decided to hang on to a few. The Phase 3 like, was the fastest four-door production car in the world at that stage and you could go and buy it straight off the assembly line and that's what you were getting. You were, you were getting a, a fast car straight off, straight off the showroom floor and they, they were the kings of the road as far as I was concerned. And as you're driving along the road, like, people recognise them and you'll get the lights flashing at you and thumbs up and that type of thing and if you pull it up in the street of a night people have always come and looking at the car and and then want you to try and skid the wheels when you leave but you can't do that so that um, yeah it's just people are still interested in them yeah for sure there's no doubting that an xy phase three in 1971 set the benchmark as a performance road car an american derivative 351 cubic inches in the imperial or 5.8 litres in the metric scale. It's amazing how powerful these cars were back in the day. You may be looking at me now and think, oh yeah, Fletch, you're going on, you're banging on about an old car that's, you know, 50 years old. We've got to put things into perspective. The late model cars today have got their overdrives and they've got a few advantages to give them that top end. But back in these times, the smaller engines may have done 120, 130 miles an hour, but it was the ferocity at the rate that these things did. These cars were capable of pinning you in your seat to 100 miles an hour and over right the way through the torque spectrum from down low to up high. There was no period of slow winding out. These were an intimidating car. The shaker through the hood, basically just the air cleaner moving around on the engine mounts, but hey, they look great. And they used to rock and roll when you put the foot down and through the gears. They'd lift up on the torque side and they'd also come down back through the gears on slowing down. Back in the day, in 71, if that pulled up next to you at the traffic lights, you might have just been, you know, a little wary as to how this guy next to you might have taken off and perhaps embarrassed you in whatever car you were driving at the time. So when we look at apples for apples, the performance that these types of vehicles in 1971 gave, including the top specs from General Motors Holden and of course our chargers, it's quite amazing. The packages and performance that were available from your local dealer. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final. You can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts. Available through the Holden Certified Service Network. Okay, Peter, we move on to the next crown jewel. We have an mm. XAGT yes. 1973 model. Yes. What That's a beautiful right. car. It is a bit of a rarity, this car, because it has got some of the Phase 4 options in it. It came out from factory with a Detroit locker back end, 4V engine air, power steering and sunroof and also quarter glass windows as you might notice. Yep. Which is not too many around like that. What a beautiful car. Um, yeah. This man hasn't got one 4V, he's got two 4Vs. You, li right. you like your 4V Clevos, yeah, don't you, well, Peter? They are really good motor, mate. My good. word, my word. Yeah. Um, okay, let's have a look at this XA for example. Now, 1973, I uh, had the liberty uh, a few years ago 
of uh, speaking to the great Al Moffat, yeah. talking about uh, the phase four that was about or, that was going to come out, and he made a certain number, as we know, set for 160 miles an hour from the factory, as opposed to 140 with the XY. There was no extra modifications to the Cleveland. The extra 20 miles an hour was going to be obtained purely from the aerodynamics. So we've gone away from our, well, you know, shoebox square to the Coke bottle era. Yeah. And you might look at the XA and have a bit of a laugh and think aerodynamics, but they were deemed as an aerodynamic car. And it was, as I mentioned, the Coke bottle styling. Mm -hmm. So just that streamlining down the side profile, air up over the roof, they're going to get their 160 miles an hour, yeah, right. which, you know, in the eyes of government back in the time, it was uh, insane to have a production car that could go that fast. Yeah, well, apparently they, they deemed they were too fast for the open road for the you know, field, but just bother buy them off the assembly line and do 160 mile an hour. So mm. I think the Minister of Transport at the time, Morris, I think he mm. was the one that actually got them squashed. Yeah, they threatened all the government orders for Falcons, yeah. no more, unless yeah. you do something about it. And they had all the parts there mm. to build these phase fours, mm. so they started putting them into some of these other cars and mm. you could order with some of them parts in them and this is one of the cars. It was a lot of speed back in the day, very quickly. We'd come from the 50s and 60s where, you know, predominantly cars overall weren't that fast. So then all yeah. of a sudden in 1970 to have these things that did up mm. over 100 miles an hour, oh, that's yeah. incredible. Interesting with the XA too because often overshadowed by the XB, the XA kind of got left behind there for a while. It's interesting mm. nowadays though, because the XA mm. has really come up and it's very yeah. sought after now. Yeah, well, it's a lot more sought after than an XB, mm. most definitely. Yeah. And uh, See, the first of the new shape, mm. uh, a lot may have sat on the fence back in the day. Well, don't worry about the XA, we'll wait till the XB comes out. Yeah. Honeycomb grill, bit yeah. of a different look. Yeah. But as you said, the um, XA really has become very collectible now, hasn't yeah, it? It certainly has, and back, you know, when the XB came out, you could buy these cars second hand for two and a half thousand dollars, yeah. most probably, yeah. to what they're worth today. Yeah. A revolutionary in styling, too, for, uh, from Ford Australia. Mm. Uh, the first year model of the wraparound dashboard, um, the high back bucket seats as opposed to the low back bucket seats mm. in the XY. Mm. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a new car in so many ways, wasn't it? Yes, and they. They drove entirely different too, like the two cars, even though they have virtually the same running gear, mm. drove a mile different. Yeah, the XA mm. being uh, the heavier out of the two mm. as well. Yeah, more softer ride than the, the XY. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Probably, yeah, probably a little bit better car really to drive. So history of this car, how did you stumble upon the XA? Well, the local Ford dealer here in town, he, he had it in his shop there for 28 years. And every year I'd say to him, you haven't sold me that GT yet. And he eventually, one day he said to me, give me a certain amount of money for it and you can have it. Oh, uh, so yeah. I end up with it. Yep. And then I, but from sitting around for years and years, I, I had to restore it. Yep. Um, Did it have dirt over it? He had stuff stacked on the roof and on the bonnet of it. There you go. And it was filthy dirty. Yeah, and, there you, you go. Know, yeah, it's always the way. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But, Basically, the car was still as he traded it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Still quite a nice car, but yeah. it needed repainting, and so we mm. stripped it down and repainted it. And you've, got no, it. you've got no regrets on buying it, have you? No. I mean, only the bloke that's got a few regrets is bloke that sold it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It really is nice. Uh, XYGT, XAGT. Yeah. You've got two, uh, two spectrums of, uh, of automotive... Um, an era there, haven't you? No, Performance cars by were, Ford. Yeah, for back in that era, like they were, yeah, they were the most sought after cars, mm. and now they mm. probably still are at this stage, to, mm. especially if you're a Ford Ford person. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you got a general respect for um, across the brands? Like you don't mind? I mean, we know you're a Ford guy, but you you don't mind the others as well. Oh no, I, yeah, no, I, I like Holden as well. I mm. just. I always thought that the XAs and XYs were always worth a bit more money than the Monaros, but now they've all sort of caught up. They're on par with one another these days. Yeah, and so, another, another nice thing too about 2023, or well, this era we're in, is we talk to enthusiasts, and that's usually the reply. Whereas mm. if this was a conversation back in the 80s, oh, mm. 
The, mm. die, the diehards were dead set on that brand. They, yep. wouldn't, even, they wouldn't even talk about another brand. No. But now it's all about a mass appreciation, mm. isn't it? Yeah, for that era. You've, yeah, got an yeah. e, you've got an EH here. I have. Yeah, I've got an EH there with a, with a um, 304 V8 in it. Um, <laughs> Spice Bird Yearbox. Yeah, who wants a 179? Oh, that's right. Just, yeah. yeah. And, Put a 304 uh, in it. It yeah. still looks quite, quite standard looking, but uh, mm. it's probably as quick as any GT. <laughs> I knew the Ford dealer had it around there and I have tried to buy it for 15 years of him and he kept on saying no, no, no. And one day I went around there and he said I, he, was, he actually was leasing the business out so he was moving his father's old cars and some of his own out of the shop and I just said to him, I said, you haven't sold me that GT yet? And he said, put his hand out the window and he said, so much. And I said, that's a bit too much, I'll give you this amount. And he said, it's yours. So after 15 years of annoying him, I end up with the car. It just brings back old memories from the early days of having these cars when I was younger. Um, weren't these particular cars, but I'd, I'd had GTs as I was growing up. And uh, always sort of sold them and thought I was out over it and then after a while I want, I want another one, so I'll go and buy another one. And uh, that's just the way it's been over the years. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to go for a, a nice little cruise. I don't go far in them, but I just like to go for a little drive around. And, yeah, just show them off a little bit, I suppose, about what it is. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fibreglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands, which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. If you're after insurance for your classic, Shannon's is a pretty good place to start. I want to pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. Keep in mind too that the Shannon's Club awaits you as Australia's largest automotive online hub. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Welcome back. Are you having fun today, Pete? I certainly have with that, Fletch. Yeah, it's been a great day. Aren't you glad I came here? I am. Hey. Yeah, yeah, me much appreciated. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. I love your shed. I love the, the layout. Um, you've got just the right amount of vehicles in the shed. You can still mm. walk around and see what, have a good look at what you've got. And I like that. Yeah, well, that was the idea, having them sitting the way they are. Is... Speaking of things nice, I guess a tribute to the great man, uh, our late Peter Brock. And yeah. uh, one of his first cars, a replica, of course. Um, I'm thinking around early 50s, about a 52. It is, a, uh, well, I think it is 52. Two, two door, of course. Austin A30. Austin A30, yep. Yeah, just the way that uh, Pete made his. Yeah, and uh, cool. this must be a, like a go-kart. Well, I haven't had it on the open road yet, but I've had it together <laughs> and driving around the yard. And yeah. it's, uh, I think it's going to go pretty well. That's one good thing about living out yeah. here in the bush. Um, yeah. There's lots of open roads, isn't there, Pete? Yeah, yeah, you can take it for a drive somewhere. There you go, <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. Now, you've done uh, a, a lot of work here. Uh, ru have, yeah. Run us through what you have done. Well, it is an Austin A30 body, and I've mounted it on a, on a Mazda chassis, which is the whole floor pan and firewall and all is out of a Mazda. The car mounts back on the on the original Mazda chassis. Yep. Bolts in the same positions, but we've put a six-cylinder Holden motor in it, five-speed Tremec gearbox, shortened ball warner rear end, four-wheel disc brakes. 
shortened WB steering column. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's had oh. quite a few modifications. How um, cool is this? The thing would be, a, it's going to be a rocket. It's going to stop well with the four yeah, discs. Yeah, four-wheel discs, um, yeah. And uh, the Holden 6, uh, 186 out to 192. It is, 192, yeah, with the cam and, and uh, solids. And uh, uh, there wasn't quite enough room to put triples or anything on it, so right. it's got a twin barrel holly on it. Yeah, that'll do. Um, which makes it breathe not too bad. <laughs> oh, what a toy. Uh, sitting on uh, the Mazda platform too, the tried and proven platform, the floor pan of the mm. Mazda. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of brain work, I guess, that might have been taken away there. At least that saved you some. But having said that, you still had to plan the body around to mount on that Mazda stuff. So oh, yeah. there must have a, been a lot of work in uh, it. A lot of work and a lot um, of measurements. And what's the bar running through the centre between the seats? That's, you can pick, a, there's a bar that goes into that from the rear and you can pick the whole body off the chassis with the forklift and pick it up and then you can use that as a rotisserie to mm. turn it around to work on the car. Yep. And you flip her up the right way, yeah. sit, sit her back on the chassis. I tell you, you're very innovative. Mm. That, that's that's good thinking that i love you know the alignment of the panels as well um mm. we look around the panel gaps too they're they're, they're spot on it, it really is a nice little car yeah it, uh, really it has worked out well the way that floor pan actually fitted this body mm. it's almost a millimeter yeah wow mm. um okay so when do you think we'll see this on the road peter well i've got a gentleman at the moment wants to paint it so uh, that's why at the moment I've started stripping it back out again. Mm -hmm, I've had it mm -hmm. now, you could drive it around now, I'm pulling yep. it apart. Yep. And it, that's when it'll get painted. Yep. We'll do, while the body's off it getting painted, we'll repaint all the chassis and, yep. and that type of thing. From the engineer's perspective, uh, you've had a good and run. How, how'd you go there uh, with engineering? I've, I've had an engineer look at the car mm -hmm. and he's been over all the welds and that type of thing. Yep. And he was quite impressed with the way it's all been done. That good. Good. All mounts back on the original mounting points of that floor pan back on that chassis. Yes. Um, and he said just a few little modifications we'll have to do to get it past for Rego, yeah. but yeah. it can be passed. So you, you're going to want it right anyway. Oh. You're not going to want to drive oh. a car where you've cut corners. You, you need to know it's oh, right. Yeah. We've only got to look at the standard uh, that you have here in the shed. Well, you're not going to build a little rocket ship like this and, and cut corners and mm. um, to go that extra mile is fantastic. Um, when the engineers come on board and say, hey, look, we love what you've done, mm. that's a pretty good accolade. Yeah, well, I'd like to get in touch with um, Peter's family then and show them the car. It's that time of the day, Peter. I want to thank you so much uh, for uh, allowing the camera in here and, and putting this episode of Classic Restos together. Um, you've got a great town here in Juni. It's not the first time been here filming and uh, we'll come back so you live in a beautiful regional part of the, the Riverina of New South Wales if you're watching the show you know I want to come out here and check out these areas around the beautiful Riverina of New South Wales you know, I've got the Wagga Wagga and you've got Griffith and you've got June E and the, it just goes on and on mm. um, beautiful part of the state mate yeah thank you very much for, Good on you, Pete. for uh, being a part of this speech and uh, that's okay and thanks for what you've done that's okay no I, it's a credit to you uh, mm. to preserve these vehicles and mm. uh you keep up your great work as well. Thanks, Pete. Thank you very much. Good on you. Well, how cool was this? Just some of the collection belonging to Peter and Pam Curran here in Juni in the Riverina of New South Wales. A sensational XY GT HO replica, his XAGT. We saw briefly the EH with a V8 inside the engine bay and rounding off with a tribute to Peter Brock with his special A30 Austin powered by a mighty Holden 6. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch. Thanks for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.